Hey guys, so in the last video I made on this knife, um, I had made that video quite a few months ago and just not published it. And uh, the full review of this knife, which is the LAPG, LA Police Gear TBFK. Um, I kind of missed a key talking point I was trying to build up to in that video. You know, I, I get long-winded long and I like to just mention everything I can think of and most of you guys appreciate that. However, one of the key points I wanted to make about this knife that I just somehow skirted around in that video, in the full review, was what this knife really represents to me for its value. And I'd like to just entitle this The Kershaw Killer, and we'll dive into that. I'm going to make this as short as I can, but this is a big point I wanted to talk about, because this is a big gripe I have with the industry. Um... If you want the full review, go watch my other video on this, and then watch this as well, and you'll have a really good understanding of where I'm coming from. My gripe with Kershaw and CRKT and various other um, knife manufacturers that make these cheap knives in the, I mean, in the case of Kershaw and CRKT, as little as $10 for folding knives all the way up to $45, $50, sometimes $60 knives that, yeah, they may have awesome designs, but you're still getting not the greatest construction in the world, um, and you're getting crappy blade steel. And it's almost insulting to me personally at this point. I feel this way. I'm not trying to be a hatred video. I'm just trying to address a topic here. Um, it's almost insulting to me at this point that you can have a company like Kershaw and CRKT especially, they have some really awesome designs, they do. And then they put a crappy blade steel like 8CR on it. And uh, a lot of us knife guys skip over so many what could be awesome knives just because that's not an acceptable blade steel for the money you're paying for a lot of these knives, you know. Um, there's a, you know, Boker is guilty of it too. I mean... All these companies have their nice knives, but they do that, and you guys know what I'm talking about. So, Kershaw in specific. I have had so many cheap Kershaws in the $20, $30 price range, even, heck, $40 and under. You're getting a really good design on a knife. You really are. But you don't get a blade steel that's actually worth going out and using, or that you could... You know, if you're going to cut things for a couple hours out of your day, maybe you get some boxes to break down at the very simplest task. 8CR is not going to get you through that. You know, uh, 30 cuts on cardboard and you're donezo. You know, you get a butter knife. So, I don't know. This knife is $35. You're getting a knife that, yeah, it's not the best design in the world. It's not the um, fanciest looking knife in the world. It doesn't have too much of a cool factor. The cool factor of this knife is Contour G10, deep carry pocket clip. Yeah, it's right hand tip down only, but it's still deep carry, good clip. Great flipping action on bearings, you know, it, it's a good flipper. Rock solid lockup. I talked about that in my other video. This knife is rock solid as a cutting tool, guys. You can wail on this thing. It is tough as nails. And you're getting S35VN that is... It really is. So, it's a $35 knife. And all you're missing out on with this, compared to those other knives, is it's a little heavier. It doesn't have big-name designers behind it. You know, you're not getting a, co a cool design and sleek lines and all this, but you're getting a really good knife. Okay, this knife, as a cutting tool with a, things that matter, like construction, strength... G10 and blade steels. I mean, you're getting a better knife here than some $80. Heck, I've even seen, we've all seen a knife that we went, wow, a hundred bucks, that knife has everything I want. Then you look at it and you're like, well, it's got a subpar blade steel. I'm not paying a hundred dollars for something like that. Or 50 bucks or 30 bucks or even 20 bucks or whatever it is. My experience with Kershaw's over the years have been not so great. And they kind of thrive in that $20 to $40 price range, $20 to $45, we'll say. I've never had a Kershaw in that price range last. Whether it's because the construction 
wasn't great. You know, there's a lot of soft screws being screwed into plastic or soft aluminum scales and things like that on those cheaper Kershaws. So the second they come apart or a screw gets loose or something, they never go back together the right way. Or if they do, it's just, it's really shoddy, you know. Um, it's not confidence inspiring. I've had a lot of knives that get with great designs. They just don't hold up. And then the blade steel, 8CR blade steel. Some of the prices I'm seeing on knives with that steel these days, just really, it. <laughs> not to sound, not to be rude to any of these companies or anything, but it's just insulting sometimes, you know? Like, we work really hard for our money, and uh, there's a lot of great options. Once again, $35 for this thing, you know? And this is a fantastic knife, guys. Um, if you just want, if you like function and strength and value it as a cutting tool and a knife over design and flashiness and stuff, I mean, you can't go wrong with this. And it just destroys any Kershaw in the $20 to $45 price range, any CRKT in the same price range. Um, so do the Rook knives, Reich, however people like to say them. They make killer knives with good steel for the $30 to $40 price range. So does Real Steel. I mean... Spyderco's Bird series, there's a lot of good options out there. This knife at 35, as far as function goes, I would say this is the best out of all my Rooks, my Birds, my budget knives, my real steels, my steel wheel cut jack. This knife in the sub $50 category, as far as just a tool to cut things with good blade steel, probably outdoes them all, if that's my only metric I'm judging it on. Once you start looking at design and attention to detail and other things like that, then the other knives come into play. But um, yeah, that's kind of my thought on this. And what I was trying to also get at in that other video was these companies need to step up their game. Kershaw has amazing designs. Um, CRKT had some really cool knives this year that I was like, oh man, I've got to get that knife. Same with Boker. But then I looked at the price tag and I looked at the blade steel and I went, what? 60 bucks and it's got OS 8 or 8CR 13 MOV and what's going on here? 440 blah steel, you know, everyone has a 440 something. Come on, guys. This is a $35 knife. The Rooks are 30 to $40. What's, what's up? So I'm going to call this the Kershaw killer, but it's also the budget CRKT killer. It's also the budget Boker killer. It's also the budget SOG killer. It's the budget, any of those companies that are making that mistake down at this price range of not giving you much for your money. So that was my whole point I was trying to get at my other review. So that's what I got to say. If you got any comments or anything, guys, let me know. Um, I still can't recommend this knife highly enough. If you watch my full review, I talk about all the things I put it through compared to some other knives and uh, have a good time. This is a great knife. I highly recommend it for 35 bucks while you can get one. So rock on guys. Until next time, that's all I got.